What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.2 beta 2 to registered developers about two weeks after the first beta release and public beta testers, you guys should be seeing this update pretty soon. Now, in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.2 beta 2, tvOS 15.2 beta 2, watchOS 8.3 beta 2, macOS Monterey 12.1 beta 2, and HomePod OS 15.2 beta 2. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what's new in the software, along with when to expect the final release. So let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update first. So you can see here it came in about 850 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. That size will vary, of course, depending on your device and the version you're coming from, but that is coming from the first beta. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update. Let's go to our settings, general about. 15.2 and we can see the build number there is 19C5036E. So we still have an E at the end of the build number there, which does indicate we still have at least a couple more betas to go. And then if we go down to the modem firmware down there at the bottom, you can see it's now 1.30.0. All right, so now what's new here in beta two? And the first thing is a pretty big feature if you have kids, and that is the communication safety feature in the messages app. So this is a family sharing feature that can be enabled by parents to basically keep your kids from seeing and sending inappropriate photos. And Apple has an entire article on this feature describing exactly what it does. And you can see here it says, the Messages app will add new tools to warn children and their parents when receiving or sending sexually explicit photos. When receiving this type of content, the photo will be blurred and the child will be warned, presented with helpful resources and reassured it is okay if they do not want to view this photo. And it says that similar protections are also available if your child attempts to send the explicit photos. So the child will be warned before the photo is sent and the parents can receive a message if the child chooses to send it. And it says that messages uses on device machine learning to analyze image attachments and determine if a photo is sexually explicit. The feature is designed so that Apple does not get access to the messages. So that last part there is pretty important, especially if you are concerned about the privacy. Apple is not getting access to your actual messages application. They can't read any messages or anything like that. And also this is not CSAM. I know some people were confused thinking this is part of CSAM, but it is not. CSAM has been you know, delayed indefinitely by Apple. We don't even know if it's coming at all at this point. Now, also in 15.2 beta 2, we get the return of legacy contacts. So if we go into our settings and go to our iCloud and then to password and security, and then down here, we will now see legacy contact. And it says a legacy contact is someone you trust to have access to the data on your account after your death. And if you tap on that, you will see you have this section right here where it shows your legacy contacts and you could add them right here. So if you were to pass away, these people would be able to access your data. So if we go ahead and tap on add legacy contact, you can see we have these splash screens that tells us exactly what this does. So it says to add somebody you trust and then to share your access key. So it says your legacy contact will need to provide an access key and a copy of your death certificate to access data from your account. And then you could also pass down your digital legacy, pass down your photos, videos, notes, documents, personal information, and more to the people you love. And then when you tap on add legacy contact, it will take you to your contacts page and you'll be able to choose who you want to add as a legacy contact. So this is a really cool feature and this was in the iOS 15 betas, but it was removed of course, like a couple of other features, but now it is back here in 15.2 beta 2 and hopefully it will make it to the final release of 15.2 as well. Also new in this update, we can now access hide my email straight from the mail application instead of going through our iCloud settings. So now if you go into mail and you go to compose a new email and you go to the from section right here and tap on the email, you can see we now have hide my email right there. And if you tap on that, you can see it will you know, enable the hide my email feature. Of course, this is an iCloud plus feature. So if you do have that enabled, you will now see this inside of the mail application directly. Now, as far as new wallpapers or new emojis, we don't have anything new here in the second beta. And at this point, we may be waiting until iOS 15.3 before we see new wallpapers or new emojis. Of course, we only have one new wallpaper here with iOS 15, which is pretty disappointing. We have some live ones as well, but only one still 
new wallpaper here for iOS 15. So hopefully we do get more when iOS 15.3 gets released. But at this point, we don't have anything new here in the second beta of 15.2. We also do not have any sign of universal control yet. So we have a new macOS Monterey beta that was also released today, macOS Monterey 12.1 beta 2. And there was no sign of universal control in that or in the new iPad OS 15.2 beta 2. So that's pretty disappointing because Apple did say it's coming later this year, but time is kind of running out. So we may be actually waiting until 2022 before we see that. Now, as far as the bugs and bug fixes go, if we check out the release notes here, we actually have a couple of bugs that are kind of disappointing to see here on beta 2. And the first one, if we go down here, you can see under core media, there is now a known issue that says streaming in the music app could result in higher CPU usage, causing faster battery drain in some scenarios. So now if you have Apple Music and you stream music in the music app, you could be facing battery drain issues here in beta two. So we don't know how severe that is. I will be testing that all week long to see if it's actually severe and noticeable, but Apple did mention it in the release notes. So just keep that in mind. And then also down here under health kit, you can see another known issue is that users who import a verifiable vaccination record are not able to add it to the wallet app and the health app may freeze. So it's taken forever to get the COVID vaccine in the wallet application. And now it's just not even working for some users and it may even freeze the health application. So that's pretty annoying. Hopefully that does get resolved by the time 15.2 releases to the public, but you could be facing issues with that here in the second beta as well. And then the loan resolved issue here in beta two is just a simple Safari extension fix for developers. Now I know a lot of people also had issues with overheating. So this is on iOS 15.2 and iOS 15.1. One. So a lot of people had issues with overheating, but after using this second beta for a while, I've actually not noticed any heat whatsoever coming from my 13 Pro Max here. So it's really hard to say if that's going to be the same case for you guys, of course, because everybody has different apps running at different times. But so far, it feels like, you know, that may be fixed here in the second beta. So if you were having issues with overheating, let me know down in the comment below if 15.2 beta 2 resolves it. Of course, if you are on 15.1 and you're not on the betas, you know, you will see a fix most likely once the next major iOS release gets pushed out, whether that's 15.1.1 or 15.2. Now, as far as performance goes, performance actually feels a tad better than beta one. I noticed this right away after my phone rebooted. And first of all, this install of beta two is probably the fastest I've seen yet on the iOS 15 betas. And right when I came back, it seemed very, very smooth. And if we go into the Geekbench scores, you can see it kind of tells a similar story here. So we scored a 1745 on the single core and a 4833 on the multi-core. So this is compared to beta one, which got a 1740. So you can see slightly higher there. And then the multi-core went from a 4817 to a 4833. So an improvement in both single core and multi-core, which doesn't even happen too often when we go from beta to beta. That's usually beta to final release. So a pretty nice improvement there in performance, at least according to Geekbench and according to my first impressions here, actually using the device. Now, as far as the battery life goes, battery life, you know, it could be a little bit worse than beta one due to that new battery drain bug when listening to music. I don't know how severe it's going to be. Like I mentioned earlier, I will let you guys know in my follow-up video this weekend, like I do every weekend to see, you know, if it is actually worse than beta one or not, but just keep in mind that battery drain might actually be an issue here in the second beta. All right. So now what's next for Apple? So today is Tuesday, November 9th. So we've actually gone two weeks without getting a beta. So the first beta 15.2 came on the week of the 25th. So, you know, if we repeat that and we go two weeks again, we would not get beta three until the week of the 22nd. So that is possible, but Apple may very well switch back to a one week cycle after this second beta. So we could see beta three as early as next week, the week of the 15th. And if that were the case, we should see 15.2 final in early December. Of course, it's really hard to say at this point if Apple's going to go back to one week or stick to two weeks. Apple is very unpredictable. And also we have the holiday break coming up. So it's really hard to say what Apple's going to do, but I would expect at least a 15.1.1 also to be released before the end of the year. Of course, that also depends on when we get 15.2. So, you know, if we get a 15.2 beta three next week 
and then a you know RC the week after on the week of the 22nd we could see the final on the week of the 29th here into early December so it's hard to say I will let you guys know you know my updated predictions over on Twitter so make sure you are following me over there but I would expect to see a 15.2 beta 3 within the next couple of weeks and then also a final before the end of the year and also possibly a 15.1.1 before the end of the year as well of course 15.1.1 would have to come out before 15.2 but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 15.2 beta 2 that is everything new in the software of course i will find additional changes and talk to you guys about the bug fixes and battery life and all of that in my follow-up this weekend but if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and of course make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 15 coverage but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon